Hi everyone, welcome to the next episode of the Bay Street Capital Holdings podcast titled How to Do It and Why Should I Care? This series aims to highlight women doing amazing work in various industries. So today we are so lucky to be joined by Angel Sianji, who is Head of Strategy at GMR Marketing. Hi Angel, lovely to have you here. Hi, I'm very excited to be here. Thank you. So I guess let's start off with an introduction and an answer to the question of the day, which is how'd you do it and why should I care? Ooh, how'd I do it? Um, That's a very good question. A good one to start with. I would say um, my career has been pretty, um, pretty much a straight line. Uh, I am head of strategy and I love what I do, but it was definitely, um, while always having been in marketing, um, I definitely have taken a couple different leaps on and off and different paths to, to get here. So um, I would say that it started in London um, with a very small company in marketing um, after I finished grad school, which I have an undergraduate degree in marketing and a graduate degree in marketing. Um, but then from there, working in London, doing marketing for a very small lingerie company, which was a blast, um, but then making the leap back to the States and working for um, Levi Strauss, which was amazing, Um, but then doing a different kind of marketing, more um, traditional advertising, sponsorship kind of marketing, Um, and did that for several years and loved it, and really kind of found my passion in um, consumer strategy, which is what I'm doing now, but then after doing that for a couple of years at Levi's, took the leap and made um, a change to switch to being on the agency side of things. So I think my whole entire career has been a little bit of back and forth, even though I've always done marketing. So whether I've been on the brand side, and then switch to the agency side, back to the brand side, back to the agency side. But I will say I've had the opportunity to work for for some amazing brands. So Levi's, um, Vans, Timberland, The North Face, um, creative artist agency on the agency side of things. So some some big brands and have had a lot of fun along the way. And I think that's probably what gets people most excited when they hear marketing and like what I've done is the brands that I work for. That's awesome. Um, so I'm really intrigued. You mentioned that you have an undergraduate and a graduate degree in marketing, but what inspired you to really join the industry of marketing? Was there a specific point in your life or was it a culmination of experiences? Yeah, um, I think, um, in my early college years, I really thought I was going to do something like really traditionally creative, I guess. And in the, in the, I guess I was like, oh, I think I'll be an artist or I'm going to be a writer. And it turned out that I sucked at both. And so <laughs> um, I was like, well, what do I do now? And um, I think, you know, for a lot of people, it's like, oh, a business degree kind of feels open ended in a way. But um But I think for me, I was like, okay, I'll go down that path, but I still want to be doing something creative. And so for me, marketing was that. It's sort of the creative side, I think, of, um, you know, business, or at least I think what most people think of is more of the creative side of business. So um, that's how I ended up in marketing was I realized that I was never going to be the best, next best artist or writer. Um, But marketing really kind of lit me up in a way that it, in hindsight, I realized I like the quantitative and qualitative side of business. And for me, marketing was kind of the best of both worlds. Okay, that's awesome. So what really helped sort of put you and position you well for a job in, a, in your marketing career? What were the best resources uh, in your eyes? Yeah, I would say, um, you know, to be honest, I don't know. I think where marketing is today versus where it was when I was in school is very different. So I don't know that there was a lot that I took from undergrad and graduate school into um, my career. I think for me, the skills that I learned in my jobs, um, so each job kind of building on the next, really helped me hone my skills along the way. So I know that's probably not what most people want to hear because we often spend a lot of money going to school and I'm not discouraging anybody from going to school. But I do think um, sometimes we think, you know, when you finish school, that's the end of it. And then you get into your career and then everything else, you know, that you've learned works in your career. But I think we sometimes forget that there's a lot to be learned or you should be always trying to learn while you're in your position. Mm -hmm. That's really awesome and really great advice as well for anyone who's starting out in their career or even progressing through their career. You know, you always have to take up that opportunity to learn. For sure. Definitely. Yeah. 
So you see, is he, you seem like quite a go-getter, you know, somebody who researched the industry quite well before you sort of endeavoured and embarked in your journey in the marketing industry. But were there any lessons that you wish you would have known before starting in the industry? You know, I think the biggest lesson for me um, was I, I had no idea that consumer strategy even existed. I didn't, there was no courses in um, my grad or undergrad programs. Um, there might be now, but um, there wasn't a direct path to where I am now. And so I think for me, I would say being open, like you might go down one path and recognize while you're in that path that there's something totally different out there for you. Um, I would still put consumer strategy under that marketing umbrella. But to be honest, I kind of just fell into it. And it was a moment of feeling like, oh, this is what I'm meant to be doing. I love marketing. I love the things that I had been doing, but this really spoke to me. And um, I don't think I would have ever gotten to this place had I not uh, kind of been more open in those other roles to see like, oh, this is something that could be interesting. And sometimes, you know, for me to get to where I was, it was about a lateral move or even maybe a little bit of a step back to end up being here. Mm, that's very helpful, actually. And thinking about sort of the span of your career, what would you say was your biggest failure? And what did you learn from it? Oh, my gosh, so many. Um, <laughs> I think um, my biggest, well, I'll say two. One, you know, sounds kind of trite, but I think it's really true is go with your gut. I have taken roles because, you know, it's um, with a big name. And something in my gut has told me like, this isn't going to be the right place for you. But I think I let my ego get in the way. So I would say, trust your gut. Sometimes, you know, things seem good on paper, but something is telling you like, this might not be quite right. Kind of listen to that. I'll also say I had gotten in a situation in uh, kind of in the middle point of my career so far where um, it was just like a not a really great environment. And instead of recognizing that it might not be the right envir environment for me, I felt like I was not good enough. And it kind of became a self-fulfilling prophecy in that like when you're so paralyzed by fear because you're not in a great environment or an environment that doesn't suit you, um, then you're not doing your best work. You can't be really creative. Um, and so then that kind of starts to feed onto itself and it just keeps kind of going around and around. So that would be the other thing I would say is sometimes, you know, the environment just isn't right and it's not necessarily your fault. Mm, that's a really good piece of advice actually for people who are starting off in their career because I feel like names carry a lot when you're starting off in the career but it's all about you know seeing where you would fit the best because it's what makes you wake up in the morning and go to work every day at the end of the day absolutely yeah and I think we don't take that um to heart sometimes you know like I remember when I first got out of school, it was like, I need to pay off these student loans. So like, <laughs> I'm going to take this job. Um, and, you know, and sometimes that's the right thing to do. But sometimes, you know, you do have to be aware that, you know, just because it's a big name doesn't mean it's going to be the right place for you. Exactly. And throughout this, you know, conversation, you began with little gems of wisdom. But I was just wondering if you had to give one piece of advice to somebody who was starting out in the marketing industry, what would it be? Oh, I would say, um, I actually, I had a, um, my boss, one of my if, um, first, I'd say one of, one of my first bosses said to me, never take a job that you 100% feel comfortable in, that you 100% feel like I can do this. And I really have taken that to heart um, throughout my entire career. I always take jobs where I feel like it's going to be a stretch because I think that's how you grow. That's how you get better at what you do. And I think that's also how you find out, um, you know, what you're really great at and what really lights you up. So mm -hmm. if you find a position, you're like, yeah, I could do this easy with my eyes closed. For me, that would never be a job I would actually want to take. And so that would be my biggest piece of advice is try and always make sure you're going to stretch yourself a little bit. If it feels a little bit scary, like maybe do that. Mm. And then finally about your career, what is one common myth about the marketing industry that you would like to debunk? I think people think marketing and of woo, there's not a lot of um, uh, science behind it. 
Um, I think a lot of people think that it's sort of like creatives being creative, right? <laughs> like we kind of make things up, um, but there is a lot of quantitative that goes into uh, marketing. And so I think that is a, a little bit of a myth that I'd like to debunk. I think for a lot of people, it's easy to understand accounting and finance, you know, because it's very finite, you know, A plus B equals C, where marketing is a little bit more about intuition, um, creativity, but is a good amount of quantitative um, um, and data and insights that needs to go into making really amazing marketing strategies. Mm, that's very helpful and good to know for those who are starting out. Um, and I'm sure you're very busy with your job at the moment, but what is one thing that you've read or listened to recently that's really inspired you? Oh, well, that's so funny because I, like on any given day, I'm looking at I want to say like a hundred different pieces of content. Part of my job is to make sure that I know what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. So I have favorite sources that I go to, um, but I have been reading a lot of really great articles um, in particular around um, digital marketing has been obviously huge this last year, obviously yeah. given, you know, everything that's gone on in the world. So I've been really interested in following TikTok a lot. I think um, mm -hmm. a lot of what they're doing, not just from a creators, not, just from the folks on the platform themselves, but TikTok as a business and how they are uh, partnering with different brands has been really fascinating from a marketing perspective. But um, yeah, I just read so many different things. I, I, I actually find um, it's very rare for me to find something that doesn't help me in my job, no matter what it is. So That's nice. Um, and I think you touched on this a little earlier, but who are three people in your life who have been the most influential to you? Oh, so yeah, I had an early boss at Levi's. He was the one who was like, don't take a job if you already know how you can do it. Um, I have had um, some really amazing mentors. I've actually been very blessed to um, have had some mentors, I think, at every stage of my career, beginning, middle, and even now. Um, and they've typically, I guess not surprisingly, been women um, who have been pretty far up in their careers. So I would, like as another piece of advice, I would say if you can find a mentor, um, somebody who doesn't even have to be in necessarily in your uh, area of you know what you're working in, but finding somebody who you can ask questions of or you know look up to or admire, um, that has been crucial for me to have those connections. Um, like I said, and sometimes it's been you know, about work and then it's been about personal because I think these days it's hard to separate the two. And again, finding really amazing women who are kind of killing it in their careers who also have a point of view on how do you actually also have a life has been <laughs> very, very inspiring for me. That's awesome. And then finally, to sort of round off our conversation, what is one piece of advice that you would give yourself at any point in your life? Oh, I'd say um, keep up with the curiosity. I tend to be a very curious person, which is probably why I've ended up in this role of like being nosy about people's lives. Um, but yeah, I would say um, that would be my biggest tip is, you know, I think curiosity takes you pretty far, uh, no matter what you do in life, um, whatever job or, you know, career you have. So I'd say like, keep that going. I tend to be that person who always asks ask a million questions and I'd say don't be afraid. Um, my biggest mantra I guess is um, you know to always try and lead uh, not be led. That's a really great note to finish on. So thank you so much Angel for taking the time to speak with me today. It was lovely to get to know you and hear your pearls of wisdom throughout this call. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. I, I loved it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.